all of this is fun. I mean, right now we're in a studio and we're sweating. <laughs> You're making me sweat. <laughs> we're sweating. <laughs> and it's not all fun. It's not that everywhere you go, it's all about just hanging out with friends and having fun. No. So in order to do that, you need to have a strong why. Right, right, right. So what is your why? why? Hi, everybody, and welcome to The Five People On The Go, the show that's all about tools and approaches for success from the most brilliant people. My name is Mital Zavi. I'm your host, and today we have Julius Dean. Hey. <laughs> this guy is incredible. Uh, we are right now at NAS Summit. I actually, I want to take a second to thank the guys of NAS.io and NAS Studios for letting us use their studios because it looks freaking amazing. Look, we have a plant in the shot which I feel is incredible. And thank you so much for coming because I, when I saw you on stage, you're a magician. A lot of people know you. I think you have like, what, 70 million followers, something like that. You're obviously well-known. And yet, your lecture was one of the most, I want to say vulnerable things I've seen in a very long time, which is why I was persistent and said, I want you on my podcast. So before we get deep into everything. Tell us a little bit for the people who don't know you yet and are missing out, absolutely. Uh, what do you do and also what do you do today because you also kind of shifted, so yeah. Sure, so the 60 second run through mm -hmm. is that my name is Julius Dean. I'm a magician from London. I'm 28 years old. I've always been obsessed with magic since I was a little kid. Started posting on the internet, uh, blew up whilst at university. Um, ended up growing millions and millions of followers and then during the pandemic shifted to the most viral vi viral production company in the world doing billions and billions and billions and billions of views go to most viewed facebook page in the entire world during the pandemic and here i am today talk about it my my, my success my failure and the journey amazing well as you can guys hear it's really all very impressive yep. but what i want to hear is what you had to give up in order to get there because you're saying you're 28. So how long have you been doing this? Uh, so, since I was 21. Since you're 21, so seven years. Right, right. So when you're 21, you're kind of starting out your life. Right. What made you do this? What made me focus on content? Yeah. Um, well, I, I saw the social media as an opportunity to, to escape the traditional nine to five, mm -hmm. to build my own audience and community. And we live in an age right now where people can literally access millions of people from the palm of their hand, from their phone. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a magician. I looked up to popular magicians like David Blaine and David Copperfield and Dynamo, these guys that had TV shows. And I was like, right, what's the modern day version of getting a TV show? Mm -hmm. And the answer is social media. So I really focused on building an audience online and learning the, the, the tools and the tricks to, to, to how to, to, to utilize that audience and grow that audience. So when you just started out, yeah, what was your approach? Like, I want to be the biggest as possible. I want to influence people. I want to be famous. Um, honestly, my approach was to have fun. Okay. To have fun, right? I was always very focused on like, how could I have as much fun as possible? So when I was at university, I would look around and people were just not really having much fun. They're thinking their notes, they're going, getting stressed out. They go to the library. With, and don't get me wrong. Like, mm -hmm. I was in that mode as well. Like I wanted to. Kind of in my mind, I was like, right, okay, my parents, yeah, are putting pressure on me to like get a job. I have to do internships. I'm left to apply. Um, put together my CV. Put together like you know every everything in order to to live that to, to to fulfill that role. But at the same time, I was like, right, maybe there are other options out there. Maybe I can do something more fun. You know, maybe I can build my own career. And it was just a dip in my toe in the water thing at the beginning. It's like, right, let me just start posting some videos and going out and having fun and filming and trying new things. It just seemed fun. It just seemed fun to make content, right? I loved magic. Mm -hmm. I loved the idea of entrepreneurship and building. Um, when I was, you know, even when I was, even from a very young age, being a kid, I would uh, be performing and like, I even got a gig, like when I was like 13 years old, I got, a, I got paid to do magic for like 60, you know, $70. I was like, damn, this is, this is really cool. I'm making money, I'm doing magic. So as I got older, I was like, right, how can I continue to make money, build my business and keep doing magic and, and, and 
you know, and, and build and build it out. So, okay. So you look yourself as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I'd say so. How much of your creation is more about the business and what the audience want, and how much of it is actual art? You know, like the artistic side. Uh, great question. Um, I'm good. I say, ha, 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 <laughs> hey, me. Uh, it's magic is so different than real life to mm-hmm. through social media, right? And the the biggest best magicians in the world, a lot of them would be awful doing what I do, right? Because when I'm performing, I'm not performing. But let's say I did a magic trick on you right now, mm-hmm. right? Most magicians would be focused on you. I'm not so focused on you. If I'm doing magic with, you know, a guy, a girl, a famous person, someone on the street, whatever it may be, right? I'm focused on the content, right? And, and what the audience and what the, and, and what the audience see. Not necessarily what the audience want, what the audience see. And what's going to carry that video through and go viral, right? Which I know is such a classic cliche term. I don't, yeah. I don't really like the term go viral, right? Because I just think it's overused and I just, I don't think it carries with it a sense of um, community, a sense of um, something that's really earned. But the truth is like for all sense and purposes, like these videos do go viral. They do get hundreds of millions of views on single videos. So mm-hmm. that's that was my focus is like, right, how can I utilize magic? How can I follow the, the, the formula of social, social content? And how can I make my brand and the magic go viral? Okay. Does that answer your question? Does that answer your question? So yes. Of that. So we're, we're jumping a lot of places. And I'm kind of curious because if you're saying that you're focused more on the content, do you sometimes feel like you're a bit like a dancing monkey in a way, just doing whatever the audience wants? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And there's definitely a there is definitely a more recent sense of like, right, you know, what am I doing and why am I doing it? Mm-hmm. Right. And that's something that evolves over time, and and something that I am in a constant state of perpetual reflection of like, right. Am I who I was a few years ago? Like, where am I going with my brands? Do I want to be the most famous magician in the world? Which was my plan when I was 18 years old. Am I technically already there? But is it really where I want to be? You know, so there's always these questions of like, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Evaluating my successes and my failures and just like who I am as a person. And to be honest with you, it's difficult. Um, it's difficult when you're living in the game of algorithms because for me, like, I'm looking at lives with the comments and the shares and then i'm just like sometimes i'm just like right fuck this is all just absolutely ridiculous like none of this is real yeah right none of this is real who am i and that's a question that like i am trying to constantly like put in the center of everything like forget all of this stuff because it's not real well what did you find well as i say it's a, it's a perpetual state of never-ending reflection um what did I find? As a, what, what, what did I find? Um, yeah, like, why are you doing this? Who are you? Uh, well, are you the best magician in the world? I'm not the best magician in the world, right? De- de- definitely not. 100% not the best magician in the world, right? Even yesterday, right, when, you know, with Lior, Sushard, when he yeah. was performing, I was looking there and I was like, damn, he is so much better than me. However, the biggest magician in the world, debatably, I mean, debatably, everywhere I go in the world, India, Jamaica, people stop me. They didn't just say like, oh, you do magic. They're like, oh, Julie Steen. Because these videos go viral. Yeah. And there's no one else in the world. No one that's going, has gone viral in the way that I have. So as I said, it's debatable. Definitely not the best. Um, but, you know, I'm good at marketing. I do love magic. I do love content. I love creating amazing things. You're not my audience. My audience is the, is, is the people that are watching the videos. And that's the difference. I understand what you're saying. I'm just trying to understand how do you manage to keep pulling through? Because you say you're all about having fun. Right. But was. Well, it used to be. Right. But today, not all of this is fun. I mean, right now we're in a studio and we're sweating. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're making me sweat. <laughs> we're sweating. <laughs> and it's not all fun. It's not that everywhere you go, it's all about just hanging out with friends and having fun. No. So in order to do that, you need to have a strong why. Right, right, right. So what is your why? So what is my why? My why was having fun. Yeah. Right? And when I was blowing up as a magician, it was like, right, I'm going to just... It was really fun, honestly. Like, my, my 20s were, like, amazing. Right, right. Oh, and now you're, like, what, 50? <laughs> I'm, 20, I'm 28, and, I, and I've definitely hit a hard level, like, fuck, but it's not... You know, it's, listen, you hear the classic, the classic, like, you, you go up, and then you go down. Oh, wait. Well, and I'll definitely say like the last couple of last year or two has definitely been like a, a 
a, 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 a monumental, yeah, a monumental like mental down of just like, right, this is not, I'm not necessarily enjoying the same things as much. Um, the, the, the stress of like having a business and like and working with teams, um, a sense of like, I'm not where I should be uh, or where I want to be. Um, like a ge also like a geographic, like I'm all over the world. I don't feel like a sense of, um, of stability within my life. Lots of things, yeah, the mind plays game. Right? And obviously the grass is always green on the other side. Um, what I'll say is that in my youth, so to speak, okay. right? I had, honestly, there was, I was a happy-go-lucky, mm -hmm. right? Happy-go-lucky, meaning I'll just go out, film magic, you know, eventually after lots and lots of failure, I went viral, started to make money, started to an audience, started to travel, started to do magic with celebrities, started to, you know, brand deals, events. And I, I really, it really was so much fun. You like, got a lot of attention. Yeah, a lot of attention, right? You know, a lot of girls, you know, my best friend traveled with me, my best friend you know, Lee, was my videographer, we broke up in Miami, I did a story, you know, we make friends and do magic here, post it online, like, you know, go viral, then boom, we go to Brando, we McDonald's, and you know, I've got this manager. It was all, you know, but I wasn't making money. Okay. Right? I wasn't making money. I was making like good money for, for mm. like a, a 25 year old, you know, traveling the world. But I wasn't making like, I wasn't by any means like a millionaire or like, you know, making millions or even a million. Um, so then as time goes, the focus is like, right, what's my next hurdle, right? I am getting lots of attention and yeah. having fun, right? But then it's like the classic, um, you know, the, the, the classic like, oh shit, like, you know, what now? Where, no, no, it's only more now. It's just like it's like how do I accomplish the next barrier, the the next hurdle of of like you know, life, right? Which to me was a kind of um, financial it, it was stability. Fi yeah, not even stability. It was just like financial. Like, I want to make a million dollars, or like five million dollars, right? For me, it was like I want to make a million dollars, right? So pandemic hits, um, as I mentioned in my in my talk, pandemic hits, um, and I start seeing these videos flying, going viral on Facebook. I'm getting hundreds of millions of views. I'm with my ex girlfriend at the time. Uh, we, we see these videos pop online and I jump onto the bandwagon of becoming like focusing on how to make, using my knowledge of making viral videos um, and, and my magic knowledge as well, doing magic tricks. Uh, and what I saw outside from creators making these like, videos, basically there was a massive FOMO. I was seeing other traders who were making a lot of money from videos online that weren't very good, but they were going extremely viral. They were engineered in a certain way where they would explode on the algorithm because of the way the videos was, was made to like have the retention where you go right to the end of the video, you have to watch the end of the video. And I focused on that, right? And so for about a year and a half, I really focused on making the most viral videos on Facebook and succeeded, did 45 billion views, um, was the most viewed Facebook page in the world almost the entire year during the pandemic made a lot of money out of it and then when i stopped doing that then i was like right what next so i'm in a stage over the last year and a half where i'm not i'm not seeking the super highs i'm not seeking a financial um focus for me it's just about like having a positive impact and finding a positive sense of purpose so now my whole content strategy my whole business plan with myself my content my team is focused on, to be honest with you, sure, we'll, we'll take part A, have fun. I do want to have fun. It's not like I'm like, I don't have fun anymore. I definitely want to have fun. B, I still want to make money. Of course, no one doesn't want to make money. So by all means, make money. But my focus is on doing it in a healthy, sustainable way where I can, where I can have a positive impact uh, and, and, and do things in a way that I'm proud of in, in the short term and the long term. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And now my next question is, do you think you can actually proceed with what you have when you're going, well, you're kind of taking the dancing monkey out of the thing. Right. Because in order to be that entertaining, you probably needed to do some pretty stupid stuff, to right. be honest. Right, right. And do you think the audience will accept the fact that now you're, well, you're more mature, you're more positive, and well, probably a little bit more boring? <laughs> <laughs> So there's a couple of things. Right? Yeah. Firstly, I don't think my the audience even realized, right? Like no one realizes what I wasn't in the videos, mm -hmm. right? I wasn't in the videos, right? Um, I wasn't in the videos. So, okay, I wasn't in the videos. All the people I meet 
on a weekly basis that recognize me, you know, was just in the supermarket, someone came over, you know, it was my friend Josh and, oh, mate, and I do videos. Um, I, was, I was at a cafe next to the supermarket. I was in the videos. Let me give you, what do you guys want? It's on the house, right? And I was like, oh, thank you. It's okay, but thank you very much. Um, and on a daily basis, even at this, you know, NAS Summit, I met so many people who, I don't like to call them fans per se, but so many supporters who were very positive and, yeah, they took a photo of me and said, I love the work, but there's never any talk about like these, you know, what I did being like necessarily a bad thing. If anything, like, to be honest with you, like a lot of, a few creators this weekend that I've spoken to were like, damn, what you did was amazing. And generally it's a relatively positive sentiment. I don't like the videos. Mm -hmm. I don't like what we did because I feel like there was something much bigger. Right? I had 25 million pure magic fans and then we start and, and Julius Dean Vaz, and then we start popping these viral videos that the, the, the kind of they dilute the brand and, and the community right because we have other people coming in for different reasons um that's what I'd say and the third thing I'd say is that like in the last year I've done some pretty exciting things right I filmed magic on the streets of India that's gone somewhat viral mm -hmm. um and got you know like maybe collectively like 100 million views I've done magic with you know, the biggest, like Messi, you know, yeah. I'm the first ever magician to literally be invited to Messi's party and, and do magic with Messi. And exactly. that went super, super, super big online. And people only remember your latest video, to be honest with you. So even though people that were like, ah, oh, I wasn't a fan of that. Like, there's no better example to put us in than Logan Paul. Um, you know, love him or hate him. He was the talk of town. Everyone hated him um, when that thing happened with the Suicide Forest. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but, but, but anyway, the point is... Well, maybe, yeah, tell us a little bit for the hour. Uh, it was, he was a big YouTuber. He filmed a dead body in a forest about, you know, focus on... That's where you go to commit suicide. Went so viral. He, everyone hated him. He was cancelled. He stopped posting. Um, you know, he was a huge YouTuber at the time. You know, got so much hate. And then, boom, now he's flying. So, I'm not even in that level. Like, I, as I say, we're making silly, funny prank videos, yeah. right? And sketches and CCTV recreations. And they, all, all the videos say, like, this video was made for entertainment purposes. This is a fictional event. So I don't think that what I did was immoral, mm -hmm. right? And I don't think that what I did was really something that people even care too much about, right? Okay. So it's trash content, right? It was trash, viral content. As I say, within my team, we were there in a room like this, in a content house in Mexico, three content houses, 35 people in my team, figuring out, right, how to make these types of videos that will trick the algorithm and individual videos got seven, 800 million views, right? However, for me and my own personal brand and my identity and what, you know, and the vision I have for my mind, I don't want anything to do with them because I want to focus on having a positive impact. However, those videos, yeah, I don't think it necessarily had a bad impact on my reputation. That makes sense? Yeah, I honestly don't think they have a bad reputation as well. It just, the moment that, well, you're kind of saying, yeah, this is who I am. And then you're saying, well, now I want to do something different. Right. A lot of time when you're doing this process, you lose a lot of bodies. Right, right, right. So is that something you're scared of or you're saying it's worth this for me? Uh, yeah, definitely worth it. Okay. De definitely worth it. You know, I think, you, I think that like more and more, uh, I'm just coming to the conclusion that you just have to do what's true for yourself, right? And not to I think agree. too much about like maybe this, maybe that, maybe this. Like, like I don't care, right? Like, as I said, yeah. I need to connect to myself, not look at the likes, the views, the comments. Julius, you should do more of this, do more of that. You need to travel more. You need to come to, you know, like if that was the case, then like I would have read all the comments when I did the, the Israel Magic video that got like 170 million views. And all the, all the comments were like, fuck you, Julius. You know, like how dare you, you know, you resign us, right? I would have just stopped there and then. Yeah. yeah. But I don't care. Well, that's actually kind of leads me to my next question. You did things that people are just dreaming of. Uh, getting viral, getting all this attention from so many people, meeting all these celebrities. Does any of that give you satisfaction? I'm a generally quite unsatisfied person, <laughs> you know, which I think is the general nature of people that want to be or somewhat are successful. Mm -hmm. um, so no is the answer. Uh, I do have like moments or days of like, wow, that was amazing. But in general, like I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm chasing... The, you know, I'm chasing the dopamine here. I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I am someone, as I've been told by my friends, my my girlfriends, you know, people who are very close to me. I am someone that always wants more, 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 and I am chasing like up there. And because the, it's never realistic. Um, Sounds exhausting. Also, <laughs> it's it, honestly, I enjoy it. 
Okay. You no, know, I, I really enjoy it. Like, so you're a dopamine addict, basically. Um, a dreamer, a dopamine addict, you know, okay. a, um, I like a, that. A, 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 a aspirational, um, you know, entrepreneurial, I like to call it. Um, probably somewhat of like a dopamine junkie. Yeah, maybe. I try, I try to be less now. I don't think it's so healthy. But it's less. Dopamine is a quick hit, you know? Okay. Dopamine is a quick hit. Now, for, for me, it's not necessarily about the quick hits. It's about like, it's also thinking long term. Like, what can I build? Where can we go with this? You know? So right now we're working on things like the Magic Academy, right? It's just like mm -hmm. a long term vision. I wouldn't even call it a dopamine hit, but I would call it like something more like, you know, something more of a long term focus. But like, yeah, like even if things are going great, it's like, right, where can we go next? Can I ask you a personal question? Sure. How deep do you think your relationships are? Because you got all this publicity and it gotta be that some people just want to be close to you because of all that publicity everything it gets yeah um how, how do you look cool. i i'm pretty good with with reading people's body language and understanding what they're thinking and how they're thinking um up to the age of 22 i wasn't famous you know i wasn't rich you know i didn't do you know i didn't there was any of that and i was still in a position where i had to like where i was making friends and you know, just living a normal life. I think it's dangerous if you're like 10 and you become super famous like Justin Bieber. I think that can fuck you up. Absolutely. Um, I think, uh, you know, look, I'm from a, I'm from like a very grounded family, right? You know, I don't know if you met my mom, but I did. super grounded. My dad's super well family, but grounded. I'm very realistic. Like I understand who people are. Are they contaminated? Mm -hmm. Are they contaminating? It's little signs, you know, it's little things, you know, it's little things. Well, share with us. I'm actually curious. What did you notice? It's just like if they ask you for things very early on. Okay. Um, how much they'll like flex you on their story. Um, it's like straight away. Look, yeah. not even that. Like, I've got friends that do it straight away. It's yeah. just like you can tell. You can just, you just get a feel for someone's energy, you know? And like, like, and also like, you know, how giving are they as a person, right? Like, are they, you know, how the questions they ask, the way they ask the questions and the way they are around other people, right? Like there's a saying, it's not about how you treat the girl you're taking out, it's about how you treat the waiter. So look, I can, I can feel it, you know? And I'm, I, I think that one thing that I'm very good at, I'd say, um, is, is being a judge of character, right? And even when I create my content, and even when I'm building my business, even when I'm doing the magic, like a lot of being an internet street magician is not even about me, it's about the people I work with, right? Who's gonna come to these wacky places with me? Well, I've gotta find people that I can trust that are gonna travel with me and to, to Fucking Kingston, Jamaica. Right, it was the most dangerous place in the world, uh, highest murder rate in the world. Go on, still, yeah, really, you know, really fun. But, you know, I surround myself with good people. Um, I've been good at that, and yeah, very rarely have I have I um, you know, been with a bad cookie. To be honest with you, I've had situations, but small situations. You know, I, I never let them in too much. You know, we usually cut off before, before it, you know, yeah. Do you ever feel like it was in your head? Like goes to your head all this publicity and everything no never no. how do you do that because i feel like that's something a lot of people should learn uh so. I, I just i just again my, i think my parents yeah just your family yeah i just like uh, it's not real it's, it's not real it's not real sorry it's not, it's not, it's not, it's, it's all a load of dopamine rubbish in a world of technology yeah. right we're all human beings right that's it we're all human beings and the likes and the comments and the phone and people do lose themselves right I call, I just, you know, me and my mum have a funny word for it. We call it contaminated, right? It's someone contaminated, right? When they don't, when they're not connected with their own truth. And I like to be with people and I try to surround myself with people who believe their own truth, right? By that, I mean, they're actually connected with themselves and, and, and who they are. And a lot of people have lost touch. You know what I mean? They've lost touch with who they are yeah. and they're living a, they're living a life, but they don't really know themselves yeah it's actually something that i really feel in our kind of business like the creators i see a lot of people that are just saying no i only hang out with this kind of person like mm. when we were at the party right. uh that guy asked me uh how many followers they have i didn't uh, how many subscribers uh, I like i saw them yeah. dude it doesn't matter yeah. if you affect one person and this person gets something from it yeah. it's worth everything yeah exactly so, so you see it's, it's questions like it's questions like that yeah Right, and I know exactly the situation, you know, it's questions like that, that say a lot about how someone is and who someone is. You know, it's a little rash, you know, I, you, I could tell a world of information about that, about that. Not that he's a bad person, but I can just tell the way he's thinking.
yeah, I really noticed it that some people are, I'm only hanging out with like these kind of celebrities. And then it also feels very uh, artificial. Exactly, yeah. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with hanging out with celebrities. But again, it's like, what is your truth? Yeah. Right? Like, do you know? Like, look, for example, with me, yeah. right? I could play off like these videos were like the, the grand invention of like, you know, my, you know, or I could just be like, you know, I could just make out some fucking rubbish in my mind about like making the most viral videos in the world. Or I can just be real with myself. I'm like, look, oh, pandemic, it wasn't making much money, like figured something out that worked and just, you know, went with it because, you know, that was what I was good at at the time. But I'm just very real with like what, what I did, why I did it and what I want to do. And I think the honesty in your relationships with other people is the most important thing and with yourself is the most important thing. Even with even like, I've got loads of friends that, that love being with celebrities, you know? And some of them get lost in it. They're like, oh, this is the way to, this is how you be the coolest person to shin Dubai. Right? It's like, this is how you- Bling, bling. Yeah, it's like literally, it's the bling, bling, right? Yeah. But like, you know, I would respect someone who's literally just looks at me and like, look, it's really good for me when I'm with celebrities. It makes me look good, you know, gives me, gives me kudos. It allows me to know business, commerce, business meetings with people and other people like it, you know, just be real about it, you know? You don't even have to be real publicly. But like, as I say, with my friends, I like to just keep it real. Yeah, I was just about to say that when you said before about the guy that like flexes you on the story. Right. I, I don't care about that as long as he's honest about exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, yeah, I want to get more followers. It's yeah. cool. You know, just like, it's a good look, you know? Like, I'll, I'll say it as well. I'll say it to my friends as well. Yeah. And if I'm with people, I'm like, yo, let me post on my stories. It looks sick. I mean, when you posted Messi on your profile, I'm sure you thought about that. Yeah, I was going to say, 100%, you know? Yeah, exactly. Just be honest about it. It's exactly. completely cool. Okay, I want to make it more practical. Um, so what do you think is kind of your secret for success? If we try to break it down for people. My secret for success. success. Yeah. My secret for success is to try. Okay. I know it's a classic, it's boring. But it's right? true. Classic is boring. Honestly, it's, so, it's such a boring thing to say. Like, oh, just try. Like, you just have to try. Try new things. Um, be smart about it. You know, for me, for me, my... Uh, the reason that I think I'm successful is because I put myself out there. Right? Mm -hmm. I put myself out there in a way that other people didn't. Uh, you deal with a lot of criticism as well. Yeah, I've got, I've got a hard head on my shoulders. I don't really care too much what people okay. think. You know, like even within the magic community, when I started posting these videos online at the beginning, like the, the OG magic videos, <laughs> I actually, the magic circle um, mm -hmm. almost kicked me out. The magic circles are the ultimate magician's headquarters in London. Mm -hmm. And they said to me, Julius, you have to stop posting these videos. Why right? these videos are a bad look for magicians. Um, they, you know, because I was doing these videos where you like, I almost like reveal a trick. What would happen is I fail a magic trick and I post it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh, this is me messing up my magic tricks, right? People loved it. Why? Oh, it's it's authentic. Yeah. Right? It's for also, I think what was funny. Mm -hmm. right? It appeals to multiple areas of like, um, of, of emotion, right? Mm -hmm. The magic circle, so this, this magician's headquarters, right? It was like the pres most prestigious, um, you know, members club in the world and set enough to stop posting it and i didn't because i ended up leaving the magic circle and just focusing on you know content so you've got to be smart got a piece of out there got brave love a bit of luck i want to hear more about that because what you're describing right now that's not easy so what did you have in mind in that moment of them saying listen either you stop or you're done it was a very easy decision right i was looking at this magic circle like a bunch of old people in a room, right? Like, it's cool. It's cool, like, to be part of this magic club in, in London. Like, honestly, it was cool. Like, they're great, and I respect them. But, like, I'm on my own wave. You know, you have to make your own wave. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to make your own wave. Well, that's great, but, like, how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you make your own oh, wave? That's... You start... So, I think, yeah. I think you start, start small. Okay. Start small. Who, who inspires you? Mm -hmm. What are they doing? What are the things they're doing? Right, so for me, I was seeing YouTubers, like, you know, just different YouTubers who were posting loads of content. So I was like, right, I'm going to start posting content. So I got a videographer, went out on the street, started filming, filmed a prank video, like a public street prank video, because that was what was working for at the time. Posted online, didn't do very well. Mm -hmm. Then just, boom, trial and error, try new things. But you have to start somewhere. That's what I mean when I say just start, put yourself out there. Just start, put yourself out there and... What do you do? And you'll learn. You'll learn by yeah. failing. You know? like, it's, it's, okay, it's, it's a classic. Yeah. So what do you do when you fail? What do you do when you fail? Yeah. Rinse and repeat. What? <laughs> rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat, yeah. You know, the, 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 the feeling of failing 
Uh huh. I find it quite quite um. It's great, you know. It's great, you know. Like it's like look for me. Like okay, say a guy wants to go talk to a guy like Bart, mm-hmm. right? He's thinking these things in his mind. Oh my gosh! Like oh, what if she thinks I'm a creep? What if she has a boyfriend? Blah blah blah. blah. You go over and talk. Like even the process of just like, even if she's not interested or if, if it is interested, just the process of like that moment of like putting yourself out there. Yeah. Right. Getting out of the comfort zone is a beautiful thing. I agree. Right? And it challenges you as a person. So it's the process. Now, obviously, best case scenario, things go great. You go viral, you get the girl's number, right? You know, whatever it may be in whatever sphere, right? Worst case scenario, you learn something, right? You've got outside the comfort zone, you've, you've developed yourself as a person. So yeah, you just gotta try and get on with it. You can think about it all day, right? Like for me as a, bring it back to me, like, you know, many magicians, and creators would sit there in their room, like fucking dawdling about, thinking about how to do things. Like, just get on with it. I love it. <laughs> well, we need to finish soon. So, do you have any last words, anything you want to say to the audience? Because, I mean, I don't mind finishing here because that was amazing. Uh, but if you have anything that you want to say to give people that feeling of like they can do it too, uh, there is no greater time than the present. Uh, we're living in a world right now where. There is never easier access to information. You have to put yourself out there. Everyone can access the internet. Everyone can access the phone. And if not now, then when? Love it. Well, thank you so much for coming. I had the best time with you. And thank you guys for watching or listening to this episode. I hope you had as much fun as I did because I honestly did. So, and don't forget, subscribe, like all those things, you know, you know what to do. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye guys. Bye guys.